that have always sought to be right on that knife's edge uh, where things are at their most intense. Matt Gutman is no stranger to dangerous situations. And those explosions of gas and rock. Reporting from war zones. It's no longer safe and you can hear the constant incoming and outgoing of these shells. On the trail of narco terrorists. And crawling through here you can tell why El Chapo and his lieutenant came out so filthy. And humanitarian disasters. It gives you a sense of how hungry people are and how desperate they are here. Wow. He's aced some of the most daring assignments for ABC News. Matt Cuffman, ABC News. But I actually found that like, to writing about yourself is much more difficult than I had anticipated. But behind the brave face on TV was a man with a very private struggle. I'd been having panic attacks on air for the entire time I was on TV. And they made me miserable. But when things were calm and there was the expectation of perfection, especially when presenting on air, I crumbled. In his book, No Time to Panic, Matt opens up about his lifetime of debilitating anxiety and panic attacks, often triggered by the very essence of the job he loves, a TV live shot. I used to smoke cigarettes before lives because I thought it would give me some magical power. I had lucky underwear in the rotation that I thought also maybe gave me some extra, you know, panic beating powers. They didn't, by the way. You had what you called sort of the textbook imposter syndrome and that that in many ways contributed. I was afraid of being found out as not talented, as a failure, as someone who couldn't do TV, who was not a good journalist, who couldn't possibly be up there with his peers, people who I respected. Um, I, I just didn't feel like I was equal. His searing insecurities finally caught up with him when he says an on-air panic attack led him to make an egregious error. A mistake that would lead to a month-long suspension from ABC News and, he writes, public shame and personal regret. During the suspension, I decided I have to figure this out or leave TV news because I don't like it. It's making me miserable and I need to figure this out. I'd had hundreds of panics before and I always sailed through because I was able to keep on track somehow. But I don't know. This one was different. I had to find a way to get to that well of grief where I stored all of this sadness, all of this pain, and I hadn't been doing a very good job of it uh, as, as an adult. It would lead to a soul-searching journey that Matt says forced him to take a hard look at his own childhood trauma after his father was killed in a plane crash. That 12-year-old boy who lost his dad and that well of grief that you tapped into, what came out when you cried those hours and hours, days and days? Uh, making me emotional now um what came out just pain thank you thank you thank you i just okay. excavated you know a thousand pounds of pain um that had been sitting on the chest of this little boy who was 12 years old and who pushed it off for years who played sports who excelled who pushed himself into high achieving as a way to you know keep the pain at bay matt's not alone in keeping that pain at bay Panic disorder affects an estimated 6 million adults in the U.S., nearly 3% of all Americans. Countless patients in emergency rooms experiencing heart attack symptoms may actually be suffering from a panic attack. Women are twice as likely as men to suffer from panic disorder, but many mental health experts say the condition is severely underdiagnosed. People who suffer from anxiety, and particularly panic, are quiet. They feel shame about it. There's a lot of stigma. The shame and secrecy sort of amplify the panic. No Time to Panic chronicles Matt's internal journey and extreme external adventures in his quest to curb that panic. This book is definitely not a road map. This is a lot no. of kids don't try this at home. There's journey. some of that, yes. <laughs> there was no road map, and that's one of the problems. I was so eager to try to find ways to find altered states that would help me feel and tap into this deep-seated pain and grief that I was looking for almost anything. Therapy wasn't helping, pharmacology wasn't helping. So I tried the unorthodox. The unorthodox, up to and including experimenting with mind-altering psychedelics. The idea for me was that altered states helped me get to a place in my own psyche, helped me reach what I call this well of grief that I couldn't access to in my right mind. I needed help getting there. Tell me about the ketamine experience. You went to some pretty dark places. 
so or, or scary places. The earth disappeared, the universe disappeared. There was no Matt Gutman. There was no past or present. Uh, there was nothing to moor me. And so I was a speck in a limitless universe. And I stayed there for some time. You've conquered the thing that is the scariest in the world. You've been through this death zone uh, and you've come out of it. Um, it also helps reframe the way you think about yourself. After turning himself into a human lab rat, trying exposure therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy, he dropped the pre-live shot rituals that amped him up in favor of calmer methods. This is actually from a hypnotist mm -hmm. who I worked with. Um, but it's a great relaxation technique. Okay. And after a while, you get to do it in your brain. Mm. You just imagine that the shoelace exists. Okay. Um, so you close your eyes, you take a deep breath, holding on to that top knot, and then you exhale slowly, as slowly as you can. Wow. It makes you focus on something other than the thoughts in your brain. So it's a combination of mindfulness, hypnosis, and meditation. Wow. Um, which maybe they're all intertwined. Or prayer. It's like a, a rosary bead. Rosary bead, prayer beads, um, so many Buddhist religions. Knots. Exactly. Yeah. By reporting his way out of his panic, the husband and father of two says his path to healing involved learning how to quiet his inner critic. This is about constant work, and it's about being gentler on yourself. It is about retiring that drill sergeant who tells you you're terrible all the time. And conquering a lifetime of panic attacks is not just not ever having a panic attack. It's knowing that if I have a panic attack again, it's going to be okay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.